Think about the great feel-good meals that you love. The ones that take you back to being a kid and mom's home cooking. This season, we're all about that. Comfort foods, foods that simply make you feel good. And of course, we'll add a little West Coast sensibility. For me, one of the best comfort foods ever is my mom's meatloaf. A jumble of seasonings and bread mixed with meat to stretch the meal out. I simply love it. Mom's meatloaf with chive mashed potatoes and creamy mushroom sauce. I'm Garrett Shack, and today, that's what we're cooking on the coast. Comfort food for ancient Romans, medieval Europeans, and a meal stretcher during the Great Depression. Today it's mom's meatloaf with chive mashed potatoes and creamy mushroom sauce. Hail meatloaf! Let's get started. So I've got an array of things on the go already here. Uh, the mashed potatoes have started. I didn't really want to bore you with standing here peeling potatoes, chopping them. Just got them into some lightly seasoned water, boiling away. We really want to cook them well. Then we have another pan on here with just a touch of butter in it and I want to dice up some onions and celery, nice and fine. This is gonna go into our meatloaf. There's a little bit of flavorings in there. So we wanna get it fairly fine. That way when we cut through the meatloaf, it won't sort of uh, get caught with the knife and, and, and break the whole thing apart. And I'll grab the celery, do the same thing. Again, a nice fine dice, but all we're trying to really do here is sort of sweat them down. We don't want any color, just wanna soften the vegetables up a little bit. I don't know why, but I always cut these end bits off. Don't throw them away. Uh, save them around for stock if you're going to be making a beef or a chicken stock. And now we're going to cut just strips of this celery here. Okay, and now that rocking motion, keep those fingers tucked back. And away we go. Great, nice fine dice and into our pan. Turn the heat up on it just a little bit. And then we'll turn our attention to the real, uh, the real prize here, which is in the fridge, our ground beef. Now, I'm using ground chuck here today because I think that it has the most flavor. Ground chuck has a, it comes sort of from the neck of the cow and it has a little bit extra fat in there so it really adds to the flavor of the beef. We're gonna start adding our ingredients right into it. So, like I mentioned, in the Great Depression, they used to use these off cuts or, or the, the sort of um, tougher cuts of meat that'd be ground up or really finely diced, and then they'd need to stretch it. So you'd use sort of cheaper ingredients, things like breadcrumbs or oats, things like that. Couple of eggs, crack them right in there. Next up, we have some capers. Now, I never really remember my mom putting them in there, but when I talked to her, she said she always put capers in, so why wouldn't I do it? It's mom's recipe after all. Capers go in, adds a nice saltiness, a little brininess to it. And this is where meatloaf can be a lot of fun. You get the chance to sort of, you can sort of church it up, so to speak. You can add exotic ingredients and so on. And really makes it a, a fun and, and wonderful dish at the, at the dinner table. I know at my house, it's a family favorite. Not only because you get it on the meal day, but the next day, man, there's nothing beats a meatloaf sandwich. Great use for leftovers. Some salt. I've got some Dijon mustard here going in. Good tablespoon. Uh, let's use it all. I like Dijon. There it goes. And some dried thyme. Now you could use fresh thyme. I like to use dried thyme in this case. It just gets a little bit more flavor in there and it helps soak up some of the juices in the, uh, in the ground beef. There we go. And then a few other seasoning type things. We have some what's this here sauce or Worcestershire sauce. It's got a few different names. I can never pronounce it correctly. A few dashes. Tabasco. Again, just a little touch, gives, gives a bit of heat, but not overpowering. Okay, some fresh cracked pepper. There we go, and I think I have everything in here now, except for our sauteed celery and onions, which we will add. Now, you could let it cool down, that'd be all right, but I'm just gonna add it right in there hot. Into the bowl we go. Voila, turn that guy off, give it another little mix, and this is where we're going to get our hands right in there and get it all nice and dirty, because we really want to incorporate all these things. We want to really mash them all together and get all those flavors working together. Before I get my hands dirty, 
I want to I want to get into my pan here. Uh, I'm using a traditional sort of bread pan, you know, your normal everyday bread pan. This one's seen some days, that's for sure. Give it a good spray here. You don't want it sticking. Nice seasoned pan. And then, let's get our hands in here. That's a good sound. This is great for getting the kids involved too. Get them to wash their hands and then dig right in. They love doing it. Now, I'm gonna get this into our bread pan and into a 325 degree oven to bake for about 40 minutes or so. We'll be back later in the show to pull together mom's meatloaf with chive mashed potatoes and creamy mushroom sauce. But first, right after the break, we're getting out of the studio. You'll wanna stick around for that. grilled to the Mac food cart and I'm super excited. Comfort food isn't just for the home or the restaurant. You can find it right here in your favorite parking lot. With me today is Dan, the owner of the cart. Dan, how are you doing, buddy? Good to see you. Hey, good to see you too. Yeah. Thanks very much for having me. Yeah, here. thanks for coming. This is fantastic. This is a cozy looking little cart. It is cozy. Yeah, that's yeah. a good word for it. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> but I'm sure you can pump the food out, can't you? Yeah, and it, uh, it gets rocking, so you know, we have a lot of fun in there. You gotta have your <laughs> If legs. the cart is a rockin', please yeah. come and knock it. Yeah, that, absolutely. that should be your slogan, hey? Yeah, yeah. It's <laughs> nice. a good one. Uh, so, specialty, you got anything like what What would you like to fire Well, we up do for grilled cheese sandwiches, we do mac and cheese. Um, probably the, um, the most famous one is the Mac Lorraine. We, uh, we serve red barn bacon and caramelized onions. It's, oh, nice. Uh, yeah, it's a pretty good way that to go. That sounds delicious, yeah. So yeah. macaroni and cheese mixed with bacon and onions. Mixed you, with bacon you, onions. you sold me. Yeah. You sold me. Yeah. Can we uh, hop on the cart and give it a whirl? Let's do it. Cool. All right, Dan, we weren't kidding. So comfort food in a cozy environment. I feel like I should know your last name. <laughs> <laughs> well, we can work on that. Um, <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, I, uh, I wanted to do something that uh, appealed to a lot of people yeah. and um, Cheese is kind of the, the thing that does that. So uh, yeah, you bet. it was an easy decision. Um, and with this dish, red barn bacon, caramelized onions, you get the um, the sweet and the savory. And yeah, the, a little bit of that saltiness. It's, it's hard to deny, yeah. Yeah, yummy. Yeah, I bet you sell a lot of that. It, this yeah. is a favorite for sure. Now this cart's set up for efficiency. Hey, you pump the food out of this, I'm sure. And uh, it's pretty unique, isn't it? You have to be. Um, every space uh, is taken. You know, everything's got a place. Um, you don't have a lot to work with, so you really got to make it uh, go. Yeah, and, waste, no, uh, waste no corner, right? No, yeah, and yeah. you get used to it, and you get your rhythm going. And uh, yeah, it's a lot of fun. Absolutely. Cool, so we got the bacon on, the onions going. What, you're mixing up the cheese sauce there? I got my cheese yeah. sauce, and, uh, aged white cheddar sauce to make from scratch. Nice, nice. So nice and sharp, tangy. And we're gonna get the pasta going. It's uh, okay. it's an Italian uh, pasta. Yeah. Um, it's similar to uh, macaroni, but um, it's got a little extra oomph to it. Nice. It really yeah. holds the sauce. And well. they're slightly longer noodles too, right? Yeah, Yeah, they are. Uh, you can really smell the bacon and the onions cooking. I mean, that, that alone would get people flocking to this cart, wouldn't it? <laughs> nice. All right. Put it in there. So now, now is where the magic happens, hey? We'll toss it together. All into a bowl. Make sure everything's blending well. So there's some theory about the noodles, right? Are you supposed to leave a little pasta water on there or do you shake it all off? I shake it all off. You want it to uh, adhere the cheese sauce as much as possible. Right, yeah. And you definitely you, don't want to dilute that cheese sauce You don't sauce want to dilute all, right? the cheese sauce. You don't want much moisture. Fair enough. You want just lots of love. Oh, look at that. All right. No, you want lots of sauce. Yeah, I mean, that's the key, right? Very nice. And now there's no no forks or no plates and all that kind of stuff. Hey, we do, gonna, uh, you do the to-go boxes here. We're or? gonna put it in here. It's gonna hold the temperature well, so um, it won't go cold on you right away. Yeah. Yeah. There's no chance this is gonna go cold while I'm here, bud. <laughs> I'll tell you that. <laughs> that looks and fantastic. then we top it with a little extra cheese. More of that aged white cheddar. And then some toasted panko. Oh, nice. Yeah. Just for a little bit of that crunch, hey. And then uh, we can put as many forks in there as you like. Uh, let's go with, uh, yeah, sure, three works. I got two hands. <laughs> you gonna dig in and have a bite with me here, Dan? Or are you sick of mac and cheese? You're cooking <laughs> it all day. I could always eat this. Mmm. Holy smokes. So good. 
It's popular. Dan, thanks, buddy. I can see why it's so yeah. popular. Thanks for taking the time to, uh, to whip this up for us. Yeah, right on. My pleasure. All right. I'm going to keep eating some mac and cheese here. But when we come back, we'll be back in the studio. our kitchen. We're working on mom's meatloaf with chive mashed potatoes and creamy mushroom sauce. First thing I want to do, add a little milk. Homogenized milk here, you can use you can use 2% or something like that, that's fine. I'll get a little bit more heat back on the pan. Some salt and some butter are all going to go right in there. Probably a good, I don't know, let's say two tablespoons. There's a fair bit of mashed potatoes here. And now, your chance to take out some of those after work frustrations. Get in there and just start mashing it all together. That's going to incorporate the milk, it's going to mash the butter all in. Oh, it feels great. They look nice and creamy already. Now at this stage, put the masher away. And we're going to add a little bit more salt, some Parmesan cheese. Because I like cheese and mashed potatoes, I like cheese and pretty much everything. And some chives, got some lovely chives over here. Chives, member of the green onion family, they're super delicious lots of flavor in them. They uh, were thought to have been brought from China, actually. Marco Polo was the original guy to find chives and bring them across back to the European uh, continent. And we want to pack lots in there, so I'm just going to chop all of these up here. Here we go. Now, once our chive, chives are in there with our Parmesan cheese, our butter, our milk, we're just going to let that sit. I'm going to put a lid on top of it and just let it sit in there until we're ready to serve. Wow, I might sneak a little, might sneak a little taste there. Oh, man. So creamy, delicious. Can't wait to, can't wait to have those. Put the lid on and let it sit. Got a pan heating right here. A little vegetable oil. Dancing around perfectly. Wonderful. I've got a shallot. Again, another just friendly, super delicious onion, packed full of flavor, not really sharp. But we're gonna fire that into our pan and sweat it down a little bit. I'm gonna keep this fairly rustic because it's going in with all these lovely mushrooms and we don't have to worry about uh, how chopped up it is and whatnot. Same with the garlic, just some nice sliced garlic. Just like that. Again, nice big chunks. We're not too worried about uh, it being all perfect and shiny. Now onto our mushrooms. So I have several different types of mushrooms. Don't, don't worry about it at home if you don't want to load up with all the different exotic kinds. It's great just to use like a brown cremini mushroom, that's fine. I have some oyster mushrooms. These are uh, some really cool little sort of beach uh, type mushrooms, shiitake mushrooms. There's a couple things I want to touch base on really quickly with them is one, you have to stem the shiitake. This thing's like kind of woody and hard to eat, so you definitely want to pull that off before you chop it up. And then the oyster mushrooms, I'll show you what I do as well as I put these in the pan so I don't burn my garlic and onions. Go. White wine over here as well. Pour a little white wine in there. That'll stop the cooking of the garlic and onions so you don't burn them. Perfect, smells great already. I love that smell of the wine. Now let's talk about the oyster mushrooms just really quickly here. They have a woody stem as well, so I usually just chop that away, just like so. And then instead, instead of chopping them, which you can of course, but I like to just tear them apart like this. And then you get these sort of fun different textures and, and shapes and sizes in your, uh, in your creamy mushroom sauce here. There we are. Let me just chop up the shiitake. And we'll fire that into the pan as well. Okay. I'm gonna put the stove on the other side here. That's my left hand coming together nicely. Now we just wanna let that sweat down. Add some more heat. Let that sort of cook away as we go. Now the last few things we're going to fire in there, some chili flakes because we want a little bit of heat. I do like just a touch of heat in there. I think it goes really well with the mashed potatoes and our meatloaf. Another stir, some salt. Salt will help draw some of the moisture out of those mushrooms. 
if we were to overcrowd this pan too, because mm -hmm. mushrooms are mostly water, they would, uh, they would actually start to boil. So you really want to make some room for all that moisture to escape. Like you can see the steam coming up now. Did you know that one single portobello mushroom actually contains more potassium than an entire banana? Now, some heavy cream is going to go in here. As our wine, I can still see there's some in there, but let's get some heavy cream in. I know what you're thinking, heavy cream, oh my goodness, it's going to go right to my thighs. Don't worry about it, don't worry about it. You go for a run later, everything will be okay. I put in a couple knobs of butter, and we're just going to let this sort of cook away here. And just before we finish that off, I want to chop up a few fresh herbs here. So I've got some thyme. Got some thyme, just pick a few leaves. Got all kinds of thyme on my hands, right? Like what else are we going to do here? Got some tarragon. This is one of my favorite herbs of all time. It has this lovely sort of anise earthiness to it. It's just gorgeous. I love it. And it works really, really well with mushrooms. Goes great with chicken, all sorts of things. Probably seen tarragon sauce on salmon. Yeah, it's super versatile. I've got some rosemary over here. Uh, just tear it apart and then we're going to give this a nice rough chop and we'll fire it into the pan while we go check on our meatloaf, which I'm pretty sure is ready. Here we go, right into the pan, nice, we don't want to leave any behind, and so fragrant, you, if you could just smell this right now, amazing, amazing. That tarragon really gives a burst of wonderful flavor and smell. Fantastic. Okay, let's go see how that meatloaf is doing. Oh, the smell, the aroma is coming off of that uh, meatloaf when it comes out of the oven. It's one of the best things ever. Okay, now, we've got it there. You can see it started to pull away from the sides. It's looking perfect, nicely cooked. You want to look for an internal temperature if you're kind of a thermometer type person. Uh, you definitely want to cook this well done. Anywhere over, say, 160, 65 degrees, you'll be good to go. Uh, this one, I can tell, is nice and firm, so that's perfect. Now, I'm just going to knock it out. Woohoo! Look at that. Doesn't that look fantastic? Nice and moist. You can see the capers and all the celery in there. Looks incredible. Let's cut it open and see how it looks inside here. Oh, man. Juicy, succulent. Best thing ever. I can't wait to dig into this one. Now, let's get it onto our plate, put this whole dish together here. There we go. Look at this, a platter just, just, like, just like mom would have used back in the day. Some mashed potatoes on the plate too. Those are looking great. We'll give them just another stir here. Make sure they're all nicely incorporated. You can smell the chive coming off of that. It's amazing. There we go. Lends that really nice color to those fluffy white potatoes those green specks of chive all through there, blow me away. Now, let's finish up our mushroom sauce. It's been reducing, you can see it's starting to thicken already. We've got some more Parmesan here. Heck, why not, why not just put it all in there? We like cheese, right? There we go. I'm just gonna let that dissolve ever so slightly. And then we'll pour this right over top of all that meatloaf right there. Okay, all that. Heavy cream, the butter, the fresh herbs, a slight bite from the chilies. Melting, melting. It's making my mouth water. I can't wait to try this, actually. Let's give it a little taste. Oh, man. It doesn't even need any more salt. It's perfect. Mmm. Absolutely incredible. Now, nice consistency, too. Let's get it right onto our plate here. I'm just going to use my spoon. Takis, creminis, oyster mushrooms, all that cream. He's ready to dig in. Look at that. I'll make it look pretty here with a little bit of tarragon, nice sprig of rosemary. Crack some fresh pepper on the top. There you have it. Mom's meatloaf with chive mashed potatoes and creamy mushroom sauce. Now what better way to enjoy mom's meatloaf than with a choice beverage I'm sure mom would approve. With me today, Jace Kattischuk from Clive's Classic Lounge. How are you, buddy? I'm well. Great I'm to, see to see you again, pal. Thanks for having me. Yeah, yeah, my pleasure. What are you, uh, you going to concoct for us today? Well, since we're doing um, a pairing with meatloaf, I thought it'd be good to do a cocktail that was a little bit on the spicy side. So 
This one is called the Twisted View. Put a little bit more of that. This is George Dickel Rye that I'm using. That's Twisted nice. View is a cocktail that I made um, based on my favorite cocktail, which is called a View Carré. It's a uh, spirit forward. It's got some spices in it. It's got lots of depth. It's rich. The kind of thing that pairs well with a hearty meal like All this. Right. I can actually, you can actually smell those uh, like herbs and and spices mm -hmm. and so on in these cocktail in these. Uh, um, I guess, what are, what are these called? They're uh, well, there's, so aper got, not aperitifs, they're... Um, liqueurs, yeah. Liqueurs, yeah. Liqueurs, yeah. So we've got type stuff. Cinzano Orancio we've got. Um, that's giving it a bit of sweetness with an orange flavor. Um, Ramazzotti Amaro is uh, an Italian Amaro, so it's got a little bit of bitterness, a little bit of sweetness, lots of earthy, kind of bitter. It's almost herbaceous. Nice, yeah. And then uh, topped off with a little bit of Benedictine, which is a spicy French liqueur. Spice orange liqueur, so... Jerry Thomas owned decanter bitters is what we're using Fire and ice uh, for a bitter. Fire and ice this is dangerous work over here. I just want to see if, you're, uh, <laughs> if you've got your... I was going to hacky sack it. Really. So what we're going to do now <laughs> yep. is... Sorry. Just going to strain it off into the glass. Using ice globes here, the reason oh, I chose that, cool. they don't melt as quickly. Mm. So you're going to be able to enjoy that taste without it getting too diluted for 20 minutes, not just for three minutes. Once yeah, perfect, because this is a sipping drink, right? This we're is not, definitely uh, a sipper. It's spirit we're not forward, there's a lot of booze in here. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. <laughs> it smells incredible already, yeah. Excellent, so. And then do we garnish that we're up? We're just gonna garnish it up with a little bit of a, a lemon twist here. Put that in there. Very fancy, I like it. Perfect. Cool. And there we have it, the Twisted View. And you reckon this is gonna go well with the old meatloaf, I hey? Think it'd be great well, I think we should have yeah. a little sip of this and I then agree. dig into that meatloaf. Cheers, baby. Cheers. Mm. Oh man, oh, that's good. so smooth, but I get that spirit forward, but it's mm -hmm. so delicious. Let's get into this bad boy. Make sure you get some. Uh, good. Get, make sure you get some mushrooms. Oh yeah. Perfect. Here we go. First bite in. <laughs> oh wow, that's mm. good. So moist and juicy. Mm -hmm. mm. Delicious, and I think Spices you're right. Spices in there, yeah. Mm -hmm. The clove and all that stuff works super well. Mm. Brilliant. That's good. Taste. That's Well excellent. done, sir. Can't wait to try that down in Clive's soon. Mm -hmm. Check out our website where you'll find information on today's show and maybe a few surprises. I'm Garrett Shack. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to savor the flavor. Oh, this is perfect.